right. Hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by John Giorso. How are you doing, John? Good, John. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And John is from He's the founder and CEO of a company called Orca Pacific, a full service Amazon agency. And uh, and where whereabouts are you calling in from today, John? I'm in Seattle. Oh, Seattle, and I'm here as usual in San Diego. So what we want to talk about today is how to sell more on Amazon. And and first of all, um, John, maybe give us a bit of background about, I mean, how you came to be a full service Amazon agency in particular. Yeah, sure. Happy to. So uh, I've been doing this about about 12 years. Um, I, uh, I got involved um, in a, a family company about 12 years ago, saw an opportunity with Amazon. Um, mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was basically, um, a small kind of consulting practice, um, started, uh, helping brands very straightforward in the beginning. It was basically helping brands set up their products on the platform. So right. pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward service, pretty quickly realized there was a lot more opportunity than that started building, um, you know, additional services to, to drive sales, marketing, content, et cetera. Um, and over the last 12 years have, have grown our team, grown our services, grown our capability to the point where um, we're a full service agency with an exclusive focus on Amazon. So we have Mm -hmm. over 100 clients. We have over 50 people on staff. We're here in Seattle. So we're just down the road from Amazon. Um, And uh, yeah, the, the rest is history, as they say. Yeah. And obviously, um, given the situation that we're in today, uh, you know, Amazon has been booming for a while, but obviously given the situation we're in today, it's even, even more businesses, um, is transacting through Amazon, which means it's more competitive than it's ever been. Correct. Yeah, I, I would, I would say so. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. One of the biggest drivers of success on Amazon is is paid media. So especially search Mm -hmm. advertising, and in some cases, we've actually seen search advertising get a little bit less competitive just because there's so many brands that are in a tough spot right now. Ad budgets are being pulled back. Um, but I think the opportunity for brands is bigger today than it's ever been. And you know, the, the COVID impact has really only accelerated that. So, um, so what are some of the, the fundamental uh, pieces or components to building a successful business on Amazon? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I, I, I'll kind of start with our thesis, the way that we approach mm-hmm. the platform as a company. So um, we, we essentially look at Amazon as three things simultaneously. And I think for a brand uh, product company to succeed on the platform, they need to kind of understand this. So Amazon is, of course, a, a large retailer, a large marketplace. Everyone, everyone knows that. Um, but in addition to that, they're also a, a, a very large and fast growing advertising platform. And they are arguably uh, the world's most important, certainly the country's most important product search engine. So Mm -hmm. to really maximize the potential, you need to kind of understand that that they're all three of these things working together simultaneously. So in terms of more practically how to how to capture that, um, you know, I would say that, you know, success on Amazon kind of falls, if you want to break it out into three Mm -hmm. big buckets, Um, there's what we call retail readiness. So this is all the things that kind of happen before content and advertising, which are the other two. Retail right. readiness, though, is basically, is the product uh, available uh, to ship prime? Is it the right price? Is it in stock? Does is it you know have kind of the basic elements of a detail page set up? Uh, there's actually a lot of complexity that can go into making sure that happens consistently. Mm-hmm. Then there's content. Um, so making sure that the content is uh, optimized for organic reach, just like you would on Google. Um, and also making sure that it's, it's maximizing the conversion rate so that when the customer interacts with the content for your product or for your brand, they have a great experience. They get their questions answered. They feel comfortable enough to make a purchase. And then third is the advertising side. This is going to be the the biggest driver of basically paid impressions. So, um, Mm -hmm. once you make sure the products in stock and available, make sure that the conversion rates maximize through high quality content then you really want to start driving as much traffic uh, to those items and to your brand as you can within, you know, um, inevitably some some budgetary restrictions. But mm-hmm. uh, basically, then that becomes the big kind of um, denominator of success on the platform. Yeah. So, so on the um, obviously, so if you've got a, 
a product and all of that good stuff. You got that all sorted. The the content piece is obviously um, critical because today when you interact with the <clears throat> with the product or, or whatever on Amazon, you're immediately kind of switched off a bit if the content is sparse. You really want that rich content experience to feel like you're making a good purchase decision. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a huge uh, credibility driver. And, you know, when we say content, to break it down a little bit more when yeah. I say content, um, you know, there's probably the things that are obvious for folks. There's the, the imagery, there's video if you have yeah. it, there's the you know, title and bullet points and keywords, uh, but there's also reviews. We consider reviews yeah. to be content, super important uh, uh, element of content on the platform. There's um, a section on an Amazon detail page called a customer questions. So there's questions yeah. and answers. That's also content that's all indexable, searchable, as well as factors into to people's perception of the product. So um, yeah, I mean, there's there's 500 million SKUs on Amazon, 500 million individual items. So um, you have to be able to differentiate yourself uh, from your competitors and, and high quality content is a very good way of doing that. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, 500 million SKUs, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, when anybody interacts now with Amazon, because, uh, you know, people, uh, people's thresholds, I think, um, you know, first of all, it was, well, they've got a few reviews and they've got some nice pictures and a video. That's all cool. But it's people have evolved and expect more and more to your point now is when, if there's no questions and answers, you start to wonder about the product as well, about, uh, uh, you know, the validity of it. So I guess there's a there's a huge amount of effort that needs to go into making sure your product comes across as highly validated. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's super important, especially if you're not uh, a national brand. I mean, you know, if you're mm. if you're Nike, people are going to give you the yeah. benefit of the doubt. Sure. But uh, pretty much anyone else, you know, is is you're you're trying to build a brand, you're trying to potentially launch a brand on Amazon. Um, and you're just one of thousands of options uh, in, in a category. So yeah, that credibility um, becomes a huge factor, as well as just the more practical, you know, answering customers' questions, making sure mm -hmm. they have the information they need, you know, is this the right feature I'm looking for, uh, you know, those, those types of things. There's no, obviously, there's no salesperson, there's no, um, you know, there's no one to ask uh, live. So basically, the only resources you have are the, the content on the platform. Right. And then just talk a little bit about the advertising piece, because I think, uh, you know, there may be some people who are not familiar with how uh, Amazon advertising works. Yeah, sure. So there's there's two main advertising properties um, on the platform. There's basically search and display. I'll, I'll focus on search because that's the much more sort of bread and butter, low hanging fruit option. Um, so if you're if you're new or newer to Amazon, Understanding and having a good strategy in place for search advertising is, is really going to be critical. Um, it's cost per click based. Uh, the name of the, the property is sponsored ads. It used to be called AMS. But basically, the, the closest comp is Google AdWords. So I think basically mm -hmm. Google AdWords repurposed on Amazon. Once you get under the hood, it's actually quite a bit different. But from a surface level, it, it at least kind of looks and feels the same. Um, you know, you're doing keyword targeting positioning ads in front of people. You know, at this point, 50% uh, or more in some cases of the real estate above the fold is paid yeah. on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So it's really become a, a pay to play platform, which is a double edged sword. Um, it means that uh, you can, as a brand, be much more aggressive and, and position yourself in a way that would take a lot longer doing organically, like right out of the gate. But it also means your competitors can can do that as well. So, mm -hmm. so it's created a much more competitive dynamic than existed even two or three years ago. You know, I'd say it's important to test and learn. So you can start small. You can literally start with a hundred dollar budget um, and and scale it up from there. I mean, we have clients that you know spend not much money. We have clients that spend you know, uh, close to millions of dollars a month uh, on on advertising on Amazon. Right. So, um, but it's it's quite flexible. Uh, the the platform itself is is fairly nimble. If you do get to a point where you have some scale, there are you know third party technology options um, that probably make sense to start plugging into it. But you know the the, the great thing with uh, I think the best thing about Amazon advertising is its flexibility. The fact that you can do mm -hmm. really small tests, you can get real time data, what's working, what's not, 
And in my mind, the goal for any brand should be to basically have an ROI positive, um, long-term yeah. ROI positive result from advertising. So that, I think that today is still very achievable for a lot of brands. Yeah, absolutely. And then just a little bit on, um, on so yeah, I mean, as you said, I would say it's a product search engine. So search engine optimization is, is critical. And is that, um, is that very different from how you would do it elsewhere? It's, it's, again, it's kind of one of those things that on the surface, it's, it's relatively similar to doing mm -hmm. SEO with Google, for example. Uh, but then once you get under the hood, there's a lot of kind of nuanced differences, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's essentially about, um, making sure that the keywords that are going to be the most relevant, um, to your product are, are, you know, are being put like throughout, um, the, the copy, the titles, the bullet points. And then there's like any SEO practice, it's, it's a bit of a push and pull between SEO, uh, kind of, you know, keyword practices, and then, um, the way that the customer actually interacts with it. So you don't want to use mm -hmm. keyword stuffing. You don't want to do any of those kind of, right. you know, sort of obnoxious, um, <laughs> uh, hacky tactics. It's just gonna, it's just gonna backfire. Um, but the other piece of SEO on Amazon that's really interesting that, that doesn't really happen on Google, um, or elsewhere is that the paid media side, so the advertising side, will directly impact organic rank. So this isn't actually an SEO uh, right. issue, but, but it's important to understand that advertising directly then impacts organic rank. So there's kind of more than one way to rank organically. There's the SEO piece, which, which is important, but then there's also the paid influence on right. organic piece. And I, you know, the brands that are really savvy that, that do very well on the platform are really embracing both of those to improve organic rank. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And then, yeah, and I think people can see the the evolution of Amazon over time, as you said, uh, where there's so much more paid and sponsored products on that come up on your searches than ever before. As you said, I mean, it's half the page is taken up with them now. Yeah, yeah. And so if you were if you were advising somebody who was uh, you know bringing a, a product to market on on the Amazon uh, is uh, is this still the best platform is this still a good time to get on there you know it's harder than it used to be i mean 5 years mm -hmm. ago you could pretty much go source a product from china um, yeah. make sure it was kind of at a cheap price point uh, you know do a few kind of hacky things to manipulate the platform and and, and you're kind of off to the races Mm -hmm. Um, that window is pretty much closed. So I would say if you're planning on just launching a me too product offering on Amazon and thinking you can yeah. make a quick buck, those days are over. If mm -hmm. however, you are launching a product that provides some genuine incremental value, it's probably not going to be cheaper, but if, you know, it has other features, it has better branding, it has, you know, a, a story behind it. There's a real value proposition. You know, if you're doing the things that you'd have to do to succeed in traditional retail, uh, then you can absolutely still succeed on the Amazon platform. And then it's right. about kind of doing all of the fundamentals of, of product better and then doing Amazon better than your competition. And if you can do both of those, it's absolutely a winning combination. There's there's a huge amount of scale and share to take. And I think for for folks that are starting out, I would uh, encourage... Uh, kind of hyper niching down, basically looking mm -hmm. at, you know, if you're, if you're selling socks, you know, selling a, um, a six pack of white socks is, is not going to work. Like you're right. the, toast. Like you're never going to be cheaper. <laughs> you're never going to be faster. You're never going to get more scale than, than the entrenched competitors. But, you know, if you can uh, build a sock with a certain feature set for, you know, rugby players that play mm -hmm. in humid climates, there's like really specific <laughs> niche stuff. And then especially if you can back that up with market research and data prior to product development, and then also use that in the positioning itself, yeah. you can really carve out, there's so much scale that even a niche, a, a niche of a niche on Amazon can be a million dollar business. Um, yeah, yeah. That, and, that and, makes and a lot of sense. The bigger competitors aren't paying attention because it's just not big enough for them to go after it. So yeah, a good example too because let's face it, rugby players go through socks pretty quickly given the nature of the game. Yeah. Uh, so 
All right. Well, listen, John, this has been fascinating. I think this has been very informative for people to um, learn a little bit more about how how Amazon has in, uh, has evolved. Uh, but before we go, uh, all of your information will be in the contributor bio so you can learn more about John. But please do tell us a little bit more about yourself and your company and what you do and how people can learn more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're really set up to, to work with brands uh, in a number of different ways. You know, we do SEO, marketing, advertising. We can help with operational issues and logistics strategy. Uh, and we work with brands, you know, from from, again, kind of small startups to you know, some of the largest brands in the world. So, you know, if anyone's interested in our services or just wants to kind of learn more about Amazon or, or, uh, or the way that we approach it, we put out a lot of content, a lot of thought leadership. Probably two best places to find us are our website. So it's orcapac, O-R-C-A-P-A-C.com. Uh, and then we're pretty active on LinkedIn. I'm personally active. Our, our company page puts out quite a bit of content there as well. So, you know, feel free to just kind of uh, follow us, engage with us, and, and obviously reach out if, if you want to learn more. All right, perfect. Um, listen, John, this has been great. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.